Hello, everybody. I am Zamar Tompkins, host of Jaguar Sports Talk Nation. And on this episode, we've got a very exciting conversation with the mastermind behind men's soccer, head coach Edgar. And he took our men's Jaguar all the way to the national tournament, and he's here today to tell us all about it. Coach, thank you for joining us today. Very excited to have you here. How are you feeling? Uh, pleasure to be here. All right. So we're here to talk about some soccer. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Uh, you started off your third season here with a very impressive record, uh, that being 9-1-3 uh, and three, you went this fall in the CCAC. Tell me, how did it feel to be able to boast such an impressive record, and how did you step your game up so much? Well, I just am very proud and very happy for the boys. I mean, I think it uh, is a testament to, to the 10 seniors that came back this year uh, with the, and the influx of new, fresh talent that came in and really made themselves and committed to the program right away. Feels great to have some success, uh, for sure. Uh, nice, to, nice to know that we're making some progress and uh, doing Jaguar Nation proud. All right, speaking of Jaguar Nation, uh, you went 8-0-1 at home. How did it feel to have a nearly impressive, uh, nearly uh, perfect record here at home? Well, not as good as 9-0 would have been, but pretty good for sure. Uh, you know, uh, the Sportsplex has been home for Jaguar Nation for the last two years, and uh, it's really been a second home away from home for us. Uh, we feel home right there. That's a great college uh, atmosphere. Uh, it's beginning to be a really tough place to play in the CCAC, and we love that. All right, and uh, talking uh, about uh, the season, you took us all the way to the NAIA National Tournament. Uh, for someone like myself, who is a huge fan of Jaguar sports here, and uh, just wanting to know, what is it like uh, to be in that atmosphere? Like, you travel all the way to uh, uh, wherever the game is, and there is so much emotion and anticipation. It's a lot of stuff going on. Tell me how does it feel to be uh, at the, uh, playing at a national level in that atmosphere? I've been really, really fortunate in my career to be able to, to be a part of teams that have made it to the national tournament at different levels. And I can tell you the one thing they all have in common is that it's absolutely exciting and worth it. Um, it's a fantastic experience in NEI. It's unique. Uh, and the fact that the first uh, first round games are hosted by one of the four schools in your quadrant, winners go on to the final 10. So not only do we get an opportunity to play a uh, number two ranked team in the nation, we got the experience of doing it in their own backyard, uh, which is part of the reason why we took so much from it. Uh, when you get a chance to, to play the best, when you get the chance to play them at their place, you really get a chance to see what it's like to be in those type of pressure environments. And uh, super proud of the boys. Uh, the score doesn't really indicate how the game went. Uh, we really, we really represented GSU well. We took a lot of life lessons from that, and we're going to come back stronger and more prepared next year. All right. Speaking of uh, the experience, and uh, hopefully we will get back there next year. Uh, traveling all the way to Oklahoma to be able to play there. Uh, you have any favorite memories from your trip? I know it's a it's a lot for teams to 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 travel together and be able to bond together. You got any favorite memories from that? Well, I, just, I think it's just simply being able to spend extended time together as, as a family. You know, we put a lot of work together, but um, it's, the, it's the times in between the sessions, in between the games that are lasting memories sometimes. And it was just great to see the boys grow together and get that chance after some of them three really, really difficult years here to see some of their hard work pay off and get to have some of that, you know, Jaguar family time together. It was really a great thing to see. All right. Thank you, Coach. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the seniors. Don't go far. Welcome back, Jaguars. We are still here with Coach Edgar, and we're still talking about soccer. Coach, very happy to have you here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Swearingen Twins. You got them back for another season here this past year. How did it feel to have them for another season? Well, you know, it's 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 uh, you coach for a long time, and you hope to get uh, two guys like Dylan Dawson every every once in a while in your career. Uh, and I have two brothers like that, local guys from Kankakee. Uh, be such a pivotal part of the program from its inception is, is really tremendous. 
Um, you know, Dylan's probably one of the most underrated players in a CCAC, uh, except for the people that had to match up against him. They definitely respect him for sure. And it was very, very common to see uh, teams week after week uh, by halftime change and just completely go away to the other side of the field simply because they couldn't get by him. Dawson has been our, our captain since, uh, since day one. Uh, really the Iron Man of the team. Uh, really can't say enough about him. Um, he actually has played all but uh, 40 minutes in program history, and that was a coach's decision uh, in a preseason game uh, a year ago. So uh, it's going to be really, really strange uh, to see those two guys not on the field, but um, they've really, really done a, a tremendous job, uh, not just on the field, but helping us set the culture for the program. Uh, it's just been invaluable to have them and, and their family be associated with Jaguars, and we're, we're proud to call them, you know, Part of our first veteran class uh, tradition is forever, and those guys will never be forgotten for sure. Yeah, when you you put it like that, uh, I miss them already. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Luis Ramirez, uh, your your starting goalie. Uh, he performed very well this year, but I want to know how you felt about how he performed between the pipes. Go ahead and tell me about it. Well, Luis is another uh, player where platitudes just don't do him justice. Um, Luis had an exceptional career and upbringing. Uh, in South America at a very high level of play, had played at one of the top programs in the NAIA and then moved on to Division II and did very, very well. Uh, was looking for something uh, a little bit more in his last school and uh, was very, very competitive to get Luis in and you can see why. It's, uh, he's been a tremendous leader. He's stabilized the back line. Um, he has the ability to, to really be the first attacker. Um, uh, it's a, a skill that is really hard to find at this level. Um, we know that uh, he will do great things uh, at the next level, at the, at the professional level. We're excited to see him continue on. And um, another guy that um, really helped us shape the culture of the program, and we can't thank him enough. All right. And uh, while we're talking about uh, Jaguars that we really love here, a couple uh, more standouts and Jaguar favorites, that being uh, Vivas and uh, Sani. Tell me, how do you feel about how they performed this past season? Well, Hamzat Sani is a local legend for sure. Uh, he had two tremendous years at South Suburban. Um, and um, everyone that's uh, played at the uh, top amateur level in Chicago definitely knows Hamzat's name. Uh, he has been a, one of the most unselfish players in the CCAC when he came in in 2019. He was our midfield general. And as the team grew and our tactics changed, um, he's always taken on new challenges. His second year, he was an attacker for us and was extremely valuable. And then this year, uh, as an outside back on the left and the right side, so difficult to play both sides back and forth, and he did that seamlessly. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him uh, and his professionalism. Auguste, we're very fortunate uh, to have back for, for one, one more year next year, but uh, another, another player that has, has been really unselfish, uh, came in as a midfielder, uh, helped us as, an, as, a, as a forward uh, uh, winger last year, and then this year stepped into the nine row. Really is the engine to our defense, uh, the piece, the, the spark plug that makes things different uh, for us. Just never absolutely quits. Generates probably more attacking opportunities than anybody in the conference. And as he's been here, he's been consistently becoming a, more and more of a threat on goal. So we look forward to seeing what he can do for us next year in his final year. All right. And... Uh... Talk to me about the uh, returning team that you have coming in next season and uh, how we're going to be able to, uh, to uphold the standard that is Jaguars uh, soccer now. Well, when we started this program, uh, we talked to that group of, of seniors that are now leaving us about laying the first brick, right? Uh, you know, you build a house one brick at a time. There's always a foundation in every house that needs to be strong. And I think those guys can be proud of the fact that they left us with a really strong foundation. Uh, a map, if you will, for those coming in next. We have a group of, of returning players that have benefited from that, from, from the hard work that the, the 2019s have had started. Um, you know, it's part of our culture now that uh, it's about championships and national tournament appearances every year here. Uh, with a team that performs so well and so successfully, there's got to be some unsung heroes on this team. Talk to me about them. Absolutely. I could highlight several different gentlemen for sure, but I'd like to talk to about two seniors if I could. Hussein Ninololo is a special near and dear to our heart. Uh, you'll notice him, hard to miss him, six foot five, uh, six foot six guy, uh, all heart, uh, was a walk on, had never had the opportunity to play high level soccer before, but a tremendous soccer brain, always puts a team first. He was the heart and soul of the team. And, and Miguel Navarrete, who uh, came back for his COVID year after a really good 
uh, junior college career and two years with us uh, to start an MBA, the first person in his family to do so. Tremendous grades, tremendous character. Uh, two guys that would do anything for the team and regardless if they got 90 minutes or 90 seconds, you, they made an impact every time they played. Great, love to hear that kind of stuff about the team. Um, also, you told me uh, about the amount of players that you have here, and that puts you, in, as a coach of this team, in a very unique situation. Uh, we've got players that come to GSU from every, every part of the globe. Talk to me about how it is to have so many uh, student athletes from so many different walks of life. I think it's one of the greatest things about the NAIA is the international flair. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a really GSU in and of itself. Uh, I would consider it a melting pot. And soccer is a microcosm of GSU. We have players from all corners of the globe here. Uh, we have players from across the United States and we have plenty of local players here. It's certainly a challenge logistically uh, to, to, to work getting players from all over the country. Um, we feel that our job here, uh, we try to take care of the whole, whole person. So it's not just about the two, two and a half hours of practice, it's about uh, settling them in here in America, watching out for their needs, helping them through the transition, uh, because you can be a really good student uh, in, in South America, but university is going to be a little, life can be a little bit different in America. So, we've had really good success. Again, uh, a great staff and a great support system here at GSU and the dean of students' office, admissions, financial aids, uh, the deans of the certain colleges, all contribute uh, to making our students feel welcome, whether they're coming from down the street here in University Park or across the globe. All right, you talked about uh, the success of your students here. Uh, not only are you having that success on the field, but you're also having it off the field in the classroom. Talk to me about the academic ability that this team has. That's a great question, and, and to be honest with you, it's the thing I'm the most proud of. Wins and losses are fantastic, but we want uh, to set up our student athletes to be winners throughout life. We talk a lot about family trees, and each and every one of these young men that come in are part of their own personal family tree. Trees can grow and change in shape and size depending on the main branches, right? And we talk about the gentlemen when they leave here having the tools to be able to change their family tree, make it stronger, make it, make it uh, something that is a legacy within their own family, and a GSU education is the springboard to do that. We're super proud of the effort that our boys and, and assistant coaches uh, work with to coordinate with the fantastic professors we have at this school. We've been able to maintain above a 3.0 GPA as a team uh, since the first year at GSU. Uh, we're not satisfied with that. We always want to do better, but um, I think that's one of the things that really sets us apart is that we don't just talk the talk about being student athletes. We are students first. And I can't say enough about the work that these guys do in the classroom how the coaches, the counselors, the tutors, the professors at the school all pitch in to make sure that our general student population as well as our athletes are successful here and later on in life. And uh, for, for all the Jaguar fans like myself that want to stay up to date with all of uh, the players and everything with, uh, that goes on inside the program, is there any social media pages that we can uh, follow you guys on? GSUJaguars.com is the home base for, uh, for GSU Soccer. On our webpage, uh, we'll find our links to our GSU Soccer Instagram, as well as um, any Twitter updates through the GSU uh, athletics community. So plenty of social media platform out there. Uh, follow along every day, see what's going on with us. All right, thank you, Coach. And there you have it, Jaguar, straight from head coach Edgar himself. Make sure you stay up to date with all the Jaguar team sports, stats, and schedules uh, by visiting gsujaguars.com. I am Zamar Tompkins, host of Jaguar Sports Talk Nation. Thank you, and see you next time.